Praise the Lord. This is Fast Elders for the Global Evangelistic Ministry. So glad to be here with you on another Thirsty Thursday. Amen. I'm so glad to be here with you. I know that tonight the Lord has something specially in store for us, and I'm waiting. I can't wait to get into it. Amen. I'm looking forward to a time of us actually joining together and breaking the bread of life and actually experiencing the goodness of God that he has for us, even at this time. Amen. Let's go into a word of prayer. Then we're going to find ourselves getting directly into the word. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the author and the finisher of our faith, Father. God, that you are the one that's capable of helping us, Lord God, to, to grow together in grace, Lord God, to live together, oh God. God, I thank you, Lord Jesus, that those little things, Lord God, or those things that seem to be little that causes division and divide us, Lord God, God, that you would actually remove and cause us to be able to walk together in agreement, Lord Jesus. God, I pray, Lord God, that we will take the steps, we'll be willing to submit, we'll be willing to go forth and do the things that will cause us, Lord God, to walk together in unity. I thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Well, listen, have you ever been a part of something that was great? Something that was going well. It was good, right? It was good. You enjoyed it. It was going well. And it was great. And, and everything seemed to be okay as long as not that many people were a part of it. Everything seemed to be okay as long as everybody wasn't doing it. Everything seemed to be okay as long as just a few of us were actually partaking in it. Well, uh, but once it seemed that people decided that they wanted to be a part of it, they wanted to join in, they wanted to actually participate, that it seemed like uh, those who had been enjoying the benefits from the very beginning sometimes desire to change the rules. Hey Amen. Have you ever found yourself in a situation like that? Uh, well, this is similar to what began to take place in the early church. What ends up happening is, is that the early church, they, they, they were okay with it as long as the, 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 multi, the, 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 the largest group were the Jews in which had received Christ as Lord and Savior. But now what happens is, is that a different group comes in and desires to be a part of what Christ has to offer. They desire to receive the benefits of what it was to be saved. So you had non-Jewish uh, believers, Gentiles, they call them, that they found themselves coming to be a part of the Christian faith and taking Christ to be as their Lord and Savior. So as they began to grow in the faith, the Jews, there was a group of Jews, they began to teach that, listen, you can't really uh, do what we're doing and you're not really a uh, genuine in your faith unless you do like we've done for so long before. And they begin to teach the doctrine of circumcision, that you must be circumcised. And if you're not circumcised, then you're not authentically, truly saved. Amen. And so what ends up happening is the real problem begins when, when, when these non-Jews begin to take Christ as their Lord and Savior. And some of the early church non-Jewish believers needed to, they, they begin to tell them that you need to meet a certain standard, a, a certain group of requirements uh, in order to protect the sacredness of our faith. And what we begin to see is that the Jerusalem council had to rise up. They had to rise up and begin to take a stand on what was taking place. And they had to let their voice be heard concerning this matter. Amen. And so they held a meeting of the Jewish believers and they began uh, and, and what they held a meeting because what was happening was that the Jewish believers began to teach that the Gentiles would have to be circumcised in order to truly be genuine followers of the faith. Now, what we begin to see is James, the moderator of the council, right? The Jerusalem council, they came together, amen? This is part of church history as well. The Jerusalem council, they came together in the book of Acts chapter 15, uh, and I'm, I'm going to, tonight we're going to just pause on a few verses, uh, uh, Acts chapter 15, verse 19 
uh, through 21. Amen. And what happens is James, the moderator of the council, he he he, uh, he, he has to let it be known that this is what we're doing now. This is this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to take place. And this is how this is going to be done, because now uh, uh, literally when they when the church as a whole should have been out uh, defending the faith against the kingdom of darkness or when the church should have, as a whole been gathering together and and, and, and and loving on one another and encouraging and building one another up. Now they had a whole new set of problems to deal with. They had the, 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 the inter uh, conflict of others believing in different ways and, 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 and telling others that you're not real and you're not truly uh, saved. So James, what the moderator does is I'm going to go with, let me, let me read it for you in your ear. I'm reading from the New Living T Translation. Amen. And this is what it says, uh, starting in verse 19. And it says, and so my judgment is that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. Instead, we should write and tell them to abstain from eating food offered to idols from sexual immorality and from eating the meat of strangled animals and from consuming blood. For these laws of Moses have been preached in Jewish synagogues in every city on every Sabbath for many generations. Now today, if I was to actually give a title to this message, it would be, can we all just get along? Literally, that, that, that uh, what was happening was is that now you actually had this group of believers, uh, that, that these, these, these non-Jewish believers, and they were coming into the faith, and they were hearing the gospel, and, and they were accepting the gospel as truth in their life. And, and, and what happens is, is that uh, they, 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 as they're accepting the truth of God's word, uh, those that had already received. Now, we're talking about literally uh, years after the crucifixion. We're talking about years after between seven to, to 20 years after the crucifixion, not much, not very long after Christ dying on the cross and and so this is this is that time and we I can I can state that time frame because of the fact that apostle Paul is now considered a teacher he's considered a leader in the church right whereas one point in time he actually came to the church and when he uh, after his conversion he had found himself ready to teach ready to to share ready to go forward in doing uh, what it was um, that that he felt that God was leading him to do and literally the church told him, uh, to, they, they sent him home, basically, is what happened. They sent him home. They sent him back home. He needed a little bit more time to deal with uh, what had taken place prior to his conversion. Because he was he was considered to be a Christian slayer. He was considered to be one that was against the church. And when he came back uh, to, when he when he was converted, uh, there was, there was uh, these thoughts of, is he truly converted? And is this a trick? Or there might have been thoughts of, literally, he's done damage to my family and he's hurt my people and I'm not sure if I'm able to forgive him now. And so there was a period of time that had taken place where the Apostle Paul was sent back to his hometown to actually uh, wait. And, and what later on we begin to see is that Barnabas, he actually goes, he seeks out the Apostle Paul to make sure that the Apostle Paul actually receives uh, that which he has need of and, 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 and brings him to Antioch, amen, where the new church had been formed, amen, but, but the Jewish council, the, the head of the church was in Jerusalem, amen, which is where we actually had the Jewish council. Amen. And so, amen. And so what we begin to see is, is that we begin to see that the moderator, uh, James, what he does is he, he's actually looking to make sure that he, he, uh, he, he makes sure that, 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 that we all do get along. Amen. That we all are able to work together in unity, that we would actually be a community of faith. Amen. And sometimes what happens is, is that when we find ourselves in these situations, it can be very challenging. Amen. Because you had one group of people that they were 
longing to make sure that, that literally they would maintain the integrity of their faith, that they had been living this way and they had found themselves operating and functioning in, the, in, in this, this way of living and they did not want people to come in and just water it down with any old type of thing and begin to just do whatever they felt they could do or what they had done before uh, even in practicing other religions. Amen. And they would just try to bring it in and try to blend it together. They, and they did not. And so they had a right to actually take this stance. But, but what was happening was is it wasn't what the word of God was saying concerning what salvation would mean. Was it what the word had said that, that would be the outcome of how, those that were truly giving their life to Christ? See, one of the things that we have to do, um, the, so the council, what they do is they come together and they conclude on the matter. They conclude on the matter. And, and, and the way that they conclude on the matter is, is that we begin to see that, um, uh, um, uh, let me, we, we saw in verse 19 that they concluded on the matter. But James, the moderator, what he does is prior to actually talking about the conclusion in which he actually was to come about on, he actually begins to quote an Old Testament prophet. Amen. He begins to quote Amos. He quotes, the, he quotes Amos' prophecy of the millennial kingdom to prove Gentile salvation was not contrary to God's plan for Israel. We, we see that where? Where do you see, Pastor? Where do we see that? Well, we can go back a little bit and we can read a verse or two ahead and we can be look, at, look at verse 17. Uh, we'll look at Acts chapter, Acts chapter 15, 17, and it says... So that the rest of humanity might seek the Lord, including the Gentiles, all those I have called to be mine, the Lord has spoken. Amen. Now, now what happens is, is that he's quoting the prophet to actually confirm that 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 literally the kingdom uh, um, that, that the, of the prophecy, he quotes Amos prophecy of the millennial kingdom to prove Gentile salvation was not contrary to God's plan for Israel. He also points out the fact that Amos makes no mention of the Gentile converts having to become Jews. That, that there is no mention that they literally have to become Jews in order to actually be able to live out this Christian faith. Amen. And so what we what I, what I want to talk to what I want what I wanted to share with us is as, as we're talking about, can we all get along? Because uh, that's what's really uh, the, the necessary thing. Even now, we need to as churches and as believing as believers and as those that are actually uh, are standing together with the different denominations. And, 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 and the different ideas and the different thoughts and, and even the different focus of, of what it is that we believe that God has called us to do in this time, we must find ourselves able to get along. Amen. We must find ourselves able to work together. Amen. And so one of the things that I want to encourage us that we need to do is we are to set aside our preferences. We're going to have to set aside our preferences. Listen, if, 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 it, if it does not pertain to actual uh, whether you're going to be saved or whether you're going to not be saved, then we can put that to the side. Amen. Amen. Because the, the essentials is about salvation. It is about people coming to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And whether we believe that we should actually uh, uh, have purple carpet or red carpet in our sanctuaries, that literally will not be the issue that we'll be fighting over. Amen. Uh, literally that we're going to put aside our preferences uh, but the next thing that we're going to have to do is if we're going to find ourselves getting along is we're going to have to put aside our prejudices in order to be able to receive our brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. We're going to have to put aside our prejudices. Amen. Uh, literally, I've, I've had the benefit and the opportunity to worship with many folks. Amen. I've been in the Latino church and, and they worship. They worship. I've been in the, the African church and hey, they dance and they dance. I've been in the black church and we shout and we shout. Hallelujah. I've been in the, 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 the Caucasian church and we're quiet and we sing. Amen. I've had the opportunity to actually be to have this experience with among so great a diversity of the body of Christ and sometimes we're going to have to put aside our preferences 
And we're going to have to put aside our prejudices. If we're going to actually be able to walk together in agreement, amen, that this is what God desires. He doesn't want us fighting on whether we have communion on first Sunday or second Sunday or the third Sunday or the fourth Sunday. Amen. He doesn't want us arguing about whether or not the curtain, the walls are blue or the walls are gold or the walls are purple. Amen. Uh, literally, he does not want us dealing with issues that make no difference to the eternal value of souls and lives being changed for the kingdom of God. Amen. He wants us to get along. Amen. So what we begin to see is, is that uh, in verse 19, he begins to tell them, he says, wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them. That we trouble not them, which are from among the Gentiles. And I turn to Christ. And, 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 and really what he was saying is that the circumcision and the observance of the ceremonial law be by no means imposed upon the Gentiles. That it's not mandatory for them to actually be circumcised in order for them to be saved. Amen. Yes, these are the rituals. These are the things that we've done in times past. But according to salvation, uh, we receive salvation, an undeserved grace of Jesus Christ. He tells them that uh, that we trouble them not. John MacArthur says the, the Greek word for trouble means to throw something into the path of someone to annoy them. Amen. I'm going to read that again. John MacArthur says the Greek word for trouble means to throw something into the path of someone to annoy them. The council had decided that keeping the law and observing rituals were not requirements for salvation. That they did not want to throw a monkey wrench into the to the pot in order to make sure that folks had a little bit harder time joining and being a part of. That literally we wanted to stick to what we recognize to be true. That, that we all can share in the benefit of receiving the undeserved grace, the undeserved mercy of God. And we need not make it any harder or any easier than what it should be. Amen. But we stick to the word. Uh, there was a there was a, a, a pastor, uh, a teacher. She, she would always say what the words say. Literally, let's get back to the word. Let's see what the words say concerning this matter. And so what he was what the council was commanding that that these those these the uh, the teachers of these doctrines of circumcision being mandatory in order for them to actually be saved that they would stop troubling them with these teachings. That salvation was by God's grace. Come on, where do we see that at? Where do we see that at? We see it in Acts fifteen eleven. Amen. Now there, there were there were many that stood up to speak, right? But Acts fifteen eleven it says this right here. It says this right here. It says, we believe that we are all saved the same way. By the undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That we're all saved the same way by the undeserved grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, we are to stick to the word of God. We want to make sure that we stick to the word of God and not to try to make salvation any easier or any harder than what God's word says. See, James and the other leaders, they did not want the Gentiles uh, to, 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 so now, they, now this is what was going on, right? Because they had, they, they knew Gentiles were coming in, they needed to be discipled, they needed to learn, they needed to learn of the faith, they needed to learn what the word of God says, and they did not want these Gentiles to come in, bringing in other traditions, or to celebrate in their freedom in Christ, and do whatever uh, uh, seemed to be appropriate and cause the Jewish believers to follow that same liberty and violate their consciences. So what happens is James and the council gave four 
pagan traditions for the Gentiles to abstain from, that they would not be able to keep in order to, be, to assure that they would not actually go on into doing things that were inappropriate for believers. The first one was pollution of idols. They, that they would actually, well, let me read the verse well, again. It says, verse 20, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and fornication and from things strangled and from blood. Pollution of idols uh, was foods offered to pagan gods. And, and then they, these same foods would actually find themselves sold in the temple butcher shops. What, what, what was really being said is that we as believers were to have no manner of fellowship with idolaters and their idolatrous worship. Amen. That, that, that there were to be no uh, fellowship, no coming together, no uh, bonding, no agreement in those things that, con that were contrary to God. The next thing that they talked about was they said that, OK, now we, we, you're not to have any matter of fellowship concerning uh, 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 their worship with idol worshipers. But the next thing is fornication. There should be no sexual immorality. Because these things would to, are to never be said among the believers. Amen. That there should be no sexual immorality. Or uh, 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 sexual sins in general. All manner of uncleanness was to be stopped when you became a believer. That this was this would be some of the signs to be seen that that those things that you used to do that were unclean would be put aside, be put away, would be cut off, would be blocked, would be stopped, and no longer would we allow ourselves to actually find ourselves operating in this manner. And but 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 not only would, would, when we become a believer, uh, not only these things would, we were to flee, especially as believers. Amen. That later on, Paul he has to correct the Corinthian church of things that were taking place in the church after they had come to know Christ. We were especially to flee these things after conversion. That these things should not be named among us. Is how we operate in the things that we do. Amen. The third one that he gave us was dietary restrictions. He said, he says, listen, that uh, things that are strangled and, and blood, that these things had been forbidden before the law of Moses was given. And even now, these things should not be that, 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 that you should not find yourself consuming blood. Because according to Leviticus 17, 14, the life is truly in the blood. We need not consume blood or eat meats or animals that have been strangled. But one of the things that they wanted to bring about, that they wanted to help the people understand that if the Gentiles would actually do these things, if they would actually accept these practices in doing these things, they would please God first. But the second thing was they would get along with their Jewish brothers. We want to, we want to be a people that we find ourselves. Listen, not, I'm not talking about watering stuff down. I'm not talking about uh, uh, making up stuff so that you to, to appease somebody else or make somebody else feel better. But we should be able, as those that call on the name of Christ, to get along. Amen? We are his people. The Bible says that they shall know us by our love. It is our love that will cause men to know that we represent Christ. We want to ask the Lord to help us. To learn to love. To learn how to share his love. That men may know 
that we are of him because of his love. Amen. Listen, I believe that there's somebody with me under the sound of my voice right now that has not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Amen. I, 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 somebody has actually experienced uh, or seen or thought that there has been so much uh, division and so much non getting together and misunderstanding about church folks. It's not so. It doesn't have to be. And God can use you as the one to actually make it different. Amen. Even now, I believe that there are those that have that desire to seek Christ because you're looking for hope. You're looking for change. You're looking for something different right about now. Will you pray this prayer with me? I believe that when you pray this prayer, the Lord is going to come and he's going to come into your life and he's going to set things right. Amen. He's going to set things in order and he's going to cause things to work as they should. Will you pray with me at this time? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I believe that you died and rose again. Lord, save me. I receive my salvation now in Jesus' name. Let me pray another prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for those that just prayed that prayer. I'm asking even now, Lord Jesus, that you would actually give them a church home, Lord Jesus. In this time, it seems troubling to try to find a church home. We can easily cut somebody on and cut them off and still be in the comfort of our very own home. But God, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying that they would have a church home with church community, with church family, Lord. Will we get along? Oh, God, that the church would be a reflection of your love, that they would see, Lord God, and hear and know and learn of your ways. God, that they would observe, Lord God, in, the, in how the believers in the body of Christ interact with one another on how they may respond with their own families. Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus, for presenting, oh God, the church in a new light. Help us, Lord. Help us to be the church that you called us to be. Help us to show your love in the midst of troubling times. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Make us family, Lord. Draw us together, God. We put aside our preferences and we put aside our pre prejudices that we might do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. Even now, I believe, listen, somebody prayed that prayer. And because I know somebody prayed that prayer, listen, I can't do nothing but get excited. And every time I think about it, all I can say is, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice, all heaven rejoice. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. All heaven rejoice. Listen, two things I want to encourage you to do. First, I want to encourage you, you got to get your Bible. But listen, you want to get your Bible. You want to have your Bible. You can't, how are you going to be a Christian and not have a Bible? You got to get your Bible. You got to read it. You got to learn it. You got to study it. Get it in. Get it in. Get it in. Listen, you got to get your Bible. Listen, and if you ain't got one, or if you, you say, I read a little slow, I want you to pull, go on to YouTube and begin to listen to the Bible. Amen. Listen to the Bible. Let the Bible play in your ears and wash you. Amen. With the Word of God. Let the Word of God move you. Amen. And then the next thing I want to encourage you to do. Listen, don't do it by yourself. 
You ain't got to. It's not necessary. It's not mandatory. You can do it with somebody else. Amen. Listen, you can reach out to us. Amen. We're looking forward to working with some folks and helping them to get a little bit stronger in the faith. Amen. Even now, inbox me. Listen, we're doing 30 days of prayer. If you want to get in prayer for the next how many days? I think we got about 21 more days of prayer to go. Amen. You might want to jump in on it. Amen. It's like double dutch. It get good once you get to winning. Amen. And we so we thank God. For it. I want to encourage you all to inbox me. We will not post it on Facebook, so don't 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 think you're gonna pop. It's gonna pop up. And you're gonna see it, but you inbox me, and we'll send it to you. We'll send you how to get in on there and get in there with us and pray with us, and we'll call out and just we just going after the things of God for the next 21 days and to experience what God desires to do in the lives of His people. Amen. But I want to encourage you. Listen, you don't have to do it alone. Listen, and I want to just let you know, stay encouraged. Amen. Know that it's all right. It is good. And what has happened tonight, you giving your life to Christ, it's real. Amen. Somebody might, might be looking at you saying, that ain't real. You, you did that before. You, you, I remember last time you tried that. I, no, no, it's real. It's real. It happened for real. Amen. And God, what he's going to do is he's going to allow his love to be shed abroad in your heart. He's going to let his love to spread out in your heart. Amen. And you're going to be changed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to encourage you. God bless you and keep you. May he continue to cause his face to shine upon you. Until next time. God bless you. God bless. Bye-bye.